I know this sounds crazy, and I don't know where else to go. Something happened over the weekend that I can't fully explain, and to be honest, I haven't had a full night's rest ever since then. I tried to tell myself this is just my brain running low on caffeine. The more I push the doubts away, the more uneasy I feel. Something is wrong with my children. I, I have too many of them. I have three wonderful boys. James is eight. Braxton is six. I don't remember Dylan. I see pictures of him up on the fridge, smiling and playing catch with his dad. He goes to the same school as the other brothers. He's a great kid. With a few days that I've known him, but... Before Sunday, I have no recollection of him being a part of our family. Saturday was strange, to say the least. There was a cold front moving in. Weather reports say that there would be rain mixed with hail. We had to cancel baseball practice because of the nasty change. But no one seemed really prepared for the fog. We were leaving the field and I saw it roll in. I think it came from the south. It was thick. So very much so that traffic came to a halt. My husband tried to get out and see if there was a way around it, but no one could see anything for miles. It was so very cold, colder than you would expect. The boys were complaining because of it. And even though we stayed in the car, I didn't feel comfortable sitting there amid the cold. Something was wrong about all of it. Everyone could feel it, but no one said anything. Braxton and James were complaining one minute about the whole situation. Then it became dead silent. Time itself seemed to stop. I remember telling them to be quiet, but we tried to drive forward inch by inch. It was a little nerve-wracking, being unsure what was just mere feet in front of you. My husband finally announced that he could see the edge of the cloud and push the ignition. I told my boys we were finally headed home, and then I saw something in the mirror. A third child. I screamed, my husband slammed on the brakes. What the hell, Joy? I thought we were going to get into a wreck. I was staring at the third child in the back seat, and everyone in my family was looking at me like I was insane. Who are you? I whispered. The question to me sounded like what any sane person would ask. I should have realized sanity left our lives the moment the fog came. The boy spoke. Mom, it's me, Dylan. Are you okay? I looked at my husband for answers, and he was equally worried, checking my head for signs of a bruise. What's wrong? Are you feeling sick? I didn't know what to say. So I waited until we got home, and the three boys were asleep. Vincent, I know this sounds insane, but I don't recall having three children. When we went into that fog, I only remember Braxton and James. I whispered as we got ready for bed. My husband couldn't believe it. He showed me family pictures of all of us. I think we need to schedule a doctor visit. This isn't normal, he said. But he didn't mean for the third child. He meant for me. I had a hard time even closing my eyes that night knowing a stranger was sleeping in my house. Worst of all, I kept wondering if my mind was playing tricks on me. How could I possibly forget having a third child? It couldn't be. Dylan is my son, and I must have just been having an aneurysm or, or something. The thought frightened me because nothing about it offered an easy solution. The next day we sent the boys to school and got that appointment. When we made it to the office, I was nearly convinced that I had just imagined the whole bizarre fog. Then I overheard a young man in the lobby arguing with two kids he claimed were not his. I don't know you. I don't care what the doctor says. You aren't mine. Get away from me. He snapped. I stopped him as he was about to go out the door and saw something in his eyes. Was it the fog? I whispered. He knew what I was talking about, and that troubled me even more. The doctor examined me and couldn't find anything physically wrong. 
I'm going to prescribe a few psychiatric medications just to help you remain calm. I'm sure this will all resolve itself in a few days, the doctor said. I smiled uneasily and promised I would take them. I never did, I'll admit. I wanted a clear mind so I'd figure out what happened and which of these children was actually real. But meeting that man confirmed to me that I wasn't alone. Others were experiencing the same as I was. I didn't know how to explain it to my husband, and I was, I was scared that he might consider sending me to an asylum if I kept pressing the issue. Maybe I was crazy. Maybe these are my children. When they got home from school, I made them food and sat across from Dylan. I wanted to try to resume a normal life as, as crazy as that sounds. The kid had made no effort to seem a threat. Maybe I was the one affected. Maybe the fog did something to me, not to him. Thanks for dinner, Mom, Dylan said as he hugged me after washing his plate. I gave him a half smile and sat there feeling absolutely awful. I was starting to feel something towards him. Was he even real? How could I be sure he was? The second night of no sleep made me get up and check on the boys to be sure that nothing out of the ordinary happened. They were all so peaceful. My life felt like a dream. But it was still off. Alarm bells rang in my head, telling me not to just push these feelings aside. I went to the attic to try to find anything connecting to Dylan's childhood. If he really was my son, I knew I would have kept some baby stuff up there, but... I didn't find anything. Not even a bracelet from the hospital. As I sat there looking at other albums, it occurred to me that every part of him seemingly manifested four days ago. Before that, he didn't exist. The next day when Vincent went to work, I checked online in our area to see if anyone else might possibly have a similar experience from the fog. It took a bit of digging and maybe one or two many coffees, but I found something buried under a help tab on a Facebook group. How to tell which of your children is real. There was a video of a mother just like me. Behind her, there were three children, all sitting in chairs strapped down by zip ties. I held my hand over my mouth as she began to speak. Everyone says I'm crazy, but I can't shake the feeling that one of these children isn't really a real kid. It started with the fog and it grew larger from there. At first I was certain, then it started to infect me more. I blur their faces, they all look the same, then I realized I wasn't sure which one was the one I couldn't remember. I needed to know if they're my blood, I, I know they will have blood, and then I told myself it didn't matter. I love them all. But that unease in my stomach didn't disappear. She took out a switchblade. Then the screen suddenly went black, announcing the video was pulled. It made my heart race. I couldn't do it. I I'm not a monster. But what she said bothered me. The fog had infected her mind. It made her question reality. What if it was doing that to me, too? What if... What if one of these children is an imposter? Yesterday, I reached my breaking point. I tried for a full day to push these thoughts aside and treat three of them as mine. Yet I had no connection to Dylan. No motherly instinct was kicking in. When he hugged me, I just felt dead inside. He... He's a stranger. A mother knows her children... I told my husband I was going to take them to the park. When they got out and played, I sat there and I watched them, trying to psych myself up to do what I needed to. I have a few safety pins in my car for clothing emergencies, and I told myself I just needed to prick their finger. That's what the woman was going to do, I was sure of it. The real ones would bleed, the fake one. I don't know. 
I waited until they got back in the car, then locked the doors. Mom, can we go for ice cream? Braxton asked. I was saying a mental countdown, then pounced, pricking his finger. Mom, what the hell? James shouted. I snagged him next. Dylan tried to defend himself, and a sharp point snagged his arm. Blood trickled down, and he cried. Mom, what are you doing? Why'd you do that? They froze looking at the other boys. I dropped the safety pin, quickly drove them to the nearest clinic. It, it was an accident. You were roughhousing and you stuck yourself. It'll, it'll only be a few stitches, I told Dylan. They promised not to say anything to their father. I've been dumbstruck and I've been horrified by that moment ever since. Their faces filled with fear, their own mother attacking them. But that isn't the worst part. Because I had one thing seared in my mind. Braxton wasn't bleeding. I want to remind you guys that I also do narrations over at Chilling. The Chilling app is available for Android, iPhone, and if you'd like to get your hands on the Chilling app and hear myself as well as many, many other narrators, and they have a whole new setup where you can watch movies on there now, and it's also free to try out with ads now, so you don't have to get a subscription like you used to before. You can actually just get the app, you can start watching, you can start watching on your PC. It's evolved so much since the last time I have updated you guys on this, and sincerely, it's a great place if you want to see more horror, especially if you like horror audio. So strongly, strongly suggest you check out the Chilling app. And finally, I want to give a huge thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. So I want to give a very special thank you to Jordan Humble, Diana Krause, Disciple, Strategy Wolf Emoji, Sully Man, Brandon Mendoza, Brimstone Pandemonium, Kaltuna, William Wellington, Scruffy the Janitor, Brenna Crow, Lakeda Canizales, Smiley the Psychotic, Jenna, Dante Kincaid, Simba's Bloody Mojo, Mephistopheles, Curse Pox Primark, M, Jesus Corneo, Yargul, Verbal Horror, Amber Clark, Jay Kearns, Mike, Himbo Jerry, Crusader Chocobo, Corbin Dallas, Estebean, Seclude, Salty Surprise, Red Shadow Cat, Turtle Man, Cryolinian, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Dirt Diver 030, Voice of Sand, Psychomel, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, William King, Sashi Sasaku, Croconut 509, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Hades Nephew, Acid System, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. I really appreciate your support, and I cannot thank you enough. I wish you all the best. Sweet dreams.